Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lighthouse Full Gospel Church. It is so glad to be. I'm so glad to be here this morning and so glad that you could join us this morning. Amen. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or whether you're watching over the internet. If you are here this morning, we're going to ask if you're able, if you would stand this morning. Yeah. And if you happen to have a Bible, we're going to ask if you would turn to Psalms 136. Psalms 136. Amen. And here it is. My Bible says, His mercy endures forever. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I'm going to read the first part of the verse, and I would like everyone to join in with me to read the last part that says, uh, for his mercy endure forever. Amen. So Psalm 136, we thank God for keeping us here throughout the years. And we thank God for our pastor, Pastor Gene Jackson. Amen. We are located at uh, 1153 Hamilton Avenue, right here in the beautiful city of Seaside, California. Uh, thank God this morning. When you have some, 136, let's say amen. 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 Psalms 136. Amen. Uh, Psalm of praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Psalms 136. Amen. Psalms 136. Everybody have it. Yes. Amen. 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 Psalms 136 and it reads, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His for mercy his mercy and the Lord is forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for, for his, his mercy and the Lord is forever. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords, for his, his mercy and the Lord is forever. To him alone does great wonders, for his, his mercy and the Lord is forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his, his mercy and the Lord is forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters. For his, his mercy endures forever. To him that made great lights. For his, his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day. For his, his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night. For his, his mercy endures forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn. For his, his mercy endures forever. And brought out Israel from among them. <coughs> For his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm. For his mercy endures forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into part. For his mercy endures forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it. For his mercy endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. For his mercy endures forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness. For his mercy endures forever. To him which smote great kings. For his mercy endures forever. And slew famous kings. For his mercy endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites. For his mercy endures forever. O king of the Shem. For his, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an inheritance. For, for his mercy endureth forever. Even the inheritance of Israel is served. For his, his mercy endureth forever. Who remembereth us in our lowest state. For, for his mercy endureth forever. And has redeemed us from our enemies. For his mercy endureth forever. Who give his food to all flesh. For his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. For his mercy endureth forever. Father, we just thank you this morning. We just bless your mighty name. And Lord, we know that your mercy endureth forever. And Lord, we can't say that, O oh God, enough that your mercy endure forever. And we thank you, Lord, that it was your mercy this morning that touched us, that allowed us to wake up this morning, oh God, with life in our body, 
We know it is because of your mercies, Father, that we are not consumed. And we just thank you this morning. It was your mercy, Father, that gave us a man to come out to your house this morning. It was your mercy, oh God, that gave us the heart to worship you this morning. And Lord, we thank you, Lord. It was your mercy that sent Jesus to the cross this morning. And we just thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. It was your mercy, Father, that gave us another chance this morning. And Lord, we thank you this morning, Father. We praise you, Father, for you are worthy to be praised. We worship you, we adore you, Father. And we just thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. My Father, we say this is your service, Father. We give this service to you. We give ourselves to you, Father, that you may have your way in this service, that you may have your way in us today, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for moving by your spirit that we know is not by power, nor is by might, but it's by your spirit. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that we have to enter into your person by and through the person's blood of your son, Jesus. And we just thank you for that blood today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father. We yes. thank you for your word this morning. That's we right. thank you for our ears right. being open to hear your word this morning. Yes. For your word changing us this morning, Father, yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. We thank you for your instruction this morning. We thank you, Father, for your encouragement this morning, yes. Father. Yes. We thank you for your healing this morning, yes. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord yes. Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the depth of our being, oh God. We praise you this morning, Father. We adore you this morning, and we thank you, Lord. We live in anticipation, oh God, of the things, oh God, that you are about to do in our midst. We live in anticipation of the things, oh God, that you are doing in our lives, Father. And we just thank you for ministering to those, oh God, not only that are in the sanctuary this morning, but minister to the hearts of those that are online this morning, Father. Let them, oh God, be able to not just connect through the internet, oh God, but truly connect with you and truly connect with your people, Father. Draw them in, oh God, by your power of your love, Father. And we thank you and we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to declare some things this morning. That's right. Amen. If you're not familiar with it, you can read it. But we want to declare some things from our heart this morning. So just take a few circles to get your heart engaged yes. with your mouth. Because we are not just reading something. We are declaring it Amen. with all our hearts. Everybody ready? Yes. Yes. Since we, we have come, come here today, today to worship the Lord. And, and to hear what he has to say. He has led us to this place that is full of spirit and love, and reminds us that all good things come from above. By God's spirit and not by might, the people shall press their way to his Holy Ghost sight. It is not hard for us to see that God in the world is out there, and at God's request, to take us say, I shall not rest. As a child of the Father, I pledge to do my part. I will actively seek to lead the lost to God. Truly, there is reality in serving the Holy One. Just look and see what the Lord has done. We call them from the four corners of our community to come and partake of this glorious opportunity. But at this hour, my heart is turned to the Holy One. To, to pray, worship, worship, and give thanks for all that he has done. This, this is my holy Bible, the inherited and infallible word of God, and I rely on my Bible with all my heart. I was glad when he said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Anybody in the house glad?
17th chapter. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Drop down to nine. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain thee. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank we you, thank Lord. you for encouraging our hearts. Thank we thank you, you for the Holy Spirit to direct us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we speak your word and for our hearing, Lord, we just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would anoint our hearing. Help yes, us to Lord. hear what you would have us to hear today. Yes, and Lord. hide it in our hearts, Lord, that we might live thereby. Yes, and we Lord. give the name, the praise and the glory to your name today. In the, the name of your Son, Jesus yes. Christ, we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Amen. Take your seat. Amen. This morning, I want to speak to us about divine supply. Divine supply. I put the word divine in the front of it. Divine supply. Yes, amen. And uh, we need to recognize that God has more than one kind of supply. Yes, he does. So are you ready for the word today? Amen. amen. Uh, we are going to be talking about lack, talking about shortages, mm -hmm. the things that we are facing in life today. And I thought this message would be helpful for us, encouraging to us, because I hear people saying from time to time, I wish things would get back to the way they were. And I also hear others saying, I'll be glad when we return to normal. Mm -hmm. Some even say that this is the new normal. Amen. But I came to tell you this morning that normal is not coming back, but Amen. Jesus is coming yes, back. Hallelujah. So today's message is entitled, Supply in the Mist of Drought. Mm -hmm. Supply in the Mist of Drought. And how many of you know that we, we're in a drought? Yes. In more ways than one. We're yes. in a spiritual drought. Yes. Yes. I put that number one on the list. Right. But there are other droughts that are happening. And change is happening every day. Daily around us, we find shortages all over the country. A baby formula is in short supply. And I see a baby in the house this morning. Amen. We're talking about exorbitant prices and the lack of, of things all over the place. Yes, they may have a bunch of it, but whether you'll be able to afford it much longer is in doubt because it keeps going up and up. It's kind of like a woman in the final stages of childbirth. You know, as it comes time for her time for delivery, that the, the birth pains come uh, heavier and heavier, and they come quicker and quicker. And we are seeing those kinds of things happening here in the earth with everything that is around it. It's not the gas, it's not the formula, it's, it's the shootings that are taking place. It's, it's things happening all over the world, all around us, all at the same time. And before we mention one thing, there's another thing on the horizon. And so we see that the birth pains are coming quicker and quicker and heavier and heavier. And we're wondering, you know, if God doesn't do something, what's going to happen? Well, I came to announce today that God is still in control. Yes, he is. He has not taken the sabbatical. Amen. He's not asleep. 
um, that he is awake and he sees and he knows what's going on. And more than that, he has the power to sustain us in the midst of it, to change whatever needs to be changed. And so what we need to do is just keep our eyes upon him and continue to trust him and know that he has already promised us that he won't leave us, he won't forsake us, he's with us always, and that whatever we need, he will supply according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus when we walk upright before him. Don't miss the last phrase. When we walk upright before him. He's not out just trying to make you feel good. He's trying to draw us to himself. And that's what's going on with all of the things that's happening in the earth today. You see, he's still the answer for the world today. Yes, he is. A lot of people won't believe in other things, but Jesus is still the answer for the world today. And so I'm concerned about America. I'm concerned about what's happening, not only here, but in the earth today. I'm really concerned about those things. But as I concern myself, I remember the word of the Lord that says, cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. He cares for us today. And so we, we, we're encouraged today to know that he has not left us. He is yet with us. And in our text for today, it's the story of Elijah. There are two Elijahs in the Bible. One is Judd and one is Shuck. We're talking about Elijah today. He, who is a prophet of God, and uh, through him, God spoke the word that we're going to be hearing today. He also had to live by the same word that he spoke. And the word that he spoke, as we read those first four verses, is that there would not be rain except at his word. And he had to live by those words himself. You see, it's not just standing up telling somebody what the word of the Lord says, because we live where the people live. We have to obey and follow after those words ourselves. And so today, he spoke this word that there would not be do nor rain, except at his word. Living here on the peninsula, we are very, 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 very familiar with what it's like to not have rain. I remember when I first came to California, it rained for a solid month. <laughs> Every single day it rained. It would, you know, slack up and then it would pour down. It would slack up and it would pour down. Today, if you don't get a few drops, and I say a few drops because I think we may have had maybe two rains this year when I said rain, maybe last year, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it's over this year. And this is June. Nothing to supply our water tables. The water tables are still below average, below, below normal. And so when we consider them being in a drought, no rain, they were in bad shape. But they were in worse shape than what we were. We are, because they had no dues. At least God allowed we live by the ocean and the moisture from the the old, you know, the ocean, it kind of gives you a little bit of dew. Oh, yeah. So that the birds can have a little water, you know. The plants maybe get a little hydration. But they didn't have dew nor rain, except for at Elijah's word. And if you read through this chapter, you might find that it was in the third year of the drought before they got any water at all. And so I, we can identify with this. You see, when, when, when the... Uh, the water here became short. This was 15, maybe going on, going on 20 years ago that this was happening. And they said you have to limit your water. You can't use this or else you're going to be fine. Sure. Well, people cut their usage of the water. Guess what? We were fine. They didn't call it a fine. They raised the price That's right. Right? Right. because of the water. They weren't getting the revenues that they were used to getting. And so now you have less water, but you're going to pay more for it. Right. And so we know about all of those things. You see, we, we are still in a drought today. You're not supposed to wash your cars except on a certain day and with a certain kind of nozzle. And you're not supposed to water your ground, you know, except about mine is dead. And so thinking about pulling everything out and doing something different. Um, so they were, they were in a bad shape, and we were in a bad shape. But the condition, their condition, was caused by wickedness, by idolatry, by continual abandonment of God, continual abandonment of his word and his ways. 
And instead of amending their ways, they became progressively more wicked with each new leader, with each new day. And things haven't changed because they're doing the same things, we're doing the same things because that they were doing. Things have become progressively more wicked in the earth and not just in certain places, all over the earth. And I believe that um, this parable can speak volumes to us about, and I, I'm not talking about just us that sits right here in the pews today, or maybe the us that is online watching today. I'm talking about the people of America, or the people of whatever region others are living in. People have become more lawless, more wicked, with every new day. And God allows droughts to come. He allows various other things to come. And they're for the purpose of calling us to repentance, that we might turn from our wicked ways and turn back into God and allow him, again, to do the things that he wants to do, he's longing to do. But we have each man going according to his own way, doing whatever he felt or feels right or she feels right in our own sight. And so we're contributing to the conditions that are happening in the earth today crying out to God about how come this is happening and how come that is happening. Maybe just take a day and get your pad and sit down and, and commune with God, just you and him, and ask God, what am I doing? What should I be doing? Am I contributing? And how can I stop this? Because we are all culpable in what's happening in the earth today. We're not doing what God has called us to do. He has called us to be his witnesses, but what kind of witnesses are we? What kind of God are we paying for the world to see? This is not a heavy message today. It's going to be a light that just came out. But it, it concerns me that we can go, you know, get comfortable in Zion, so to speak, and we, it's all out there. It's all being out there that's doing all the stuff, that's causing all the problems. Well, if we're not part of the solution, we're part of the problem. Yes. And so we need to look up today. We know that sin separates us from God and that God's response to those sins is, is meant to lead us to repentance, to abandon those sins so that we can turn back to him. Yet there are some that don't believe that the water is hot until they eat it for a long time. It's kind of like that, that frog, if you put it in a pot and you and you gradually, you know, increase the heat, he'll sit there and he'll, he'll start boiling because he won't know to jump out. And we don't want to be like that frog. We, we want to see what's happening around us and begin to do something about it. Because God's people have reached that point. And so I said, I'm greatly concerned for America. But this story of Elijah gives us both direction and it gives us hope. In verses four through, uh, 2 through 4 and verse 9, this is the paraphrase of that. It's God's divine direction. God gives divine direction. And his word, the word of the Lord came unto Elijah saying, Get thee from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that you shall drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to be you there. Now, you need to stop and ponder that and think about who's doing the feeding. The ravens are not typical feeders of others. They feed themselves. And they feed themselves of that which is dead and dying. But God had commanded the ravens to feed him. They are voracious creatures. And so it caused Elijah's confidence to be strengthened that God was going to supply him, but he had to also get past his mind with thinking about what kind of creatures are going to be doing the supply. And sometimes, you know, we, God has something for us, but we start looking at who he has chosen to bring the supply, mm -hmm. and we resist what God is trying to get to us. And so I'm, I'm, I'm really asking us today to keep an open mind as to what God wants to do in your life. Because he, he doesn't do things our way. His thoughts are not our thoughts, neither are his ways our ways. 
but he gets the job done. And if we will trust him, we will be greatly benefited from the things that he does. And so he is the God of unlimited supply. And he is able to use those things that we consider unusable, like a raven, to bring you food. He brought him meat and bread, morning and evening, without fail. They generally eat of everything themselves, but Elijah was supplied while he was down by the brook chair. And so God gives divine direction and divine supplies, but to receive those provisions that God, we have to add our obedience. You see, suppose Elijah had not gone down to the, the brook chair. The Lord had been directed to go to the brook chair and deliver the supplies. And so if Elijah was someplace else, he would have missed the supplies. So we have to be where God tells us to be, doing what God tells us to do if we're going to receive what God has to give us. And so Elijah was obedient. In verse in Isaiah 119, it says, If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you be willing and obedient. Some people are willing to do this, but they don't get around to doing it. If something comes up and they never make it to the doing part, we have to both be willing and obedient. Then in 1 Samuel 15 and 22, I think most of us are familiar with this passage of scripture that it is better to obey than to sacrifice. So it's better to obey God than to sacrifice what God is saying to do what you want to do or what someone else tells you to do. Elijah obeyed and he was at the right place at the right time to receive the supplies that were directed to be provided to him there. And because he was uh, at the right place and at the right time. He not only had food, but he had water because he drank from the brook, Jared, until the time that the, the water began to recede, to dry up because of the drought. Like I told you, the same word that the other people had to obey by, he had to obey by as well. He hid himself because he had pronounced this drought and as it was coming more and more, I'm sure that Ahab was looking for him to kill him. And I'm sure a few other people might have been looking for him as well. And so he was hiding down by the blue cherub. He knows, God knows where, where we are. He knows what we need. And he can change nature to provide or to produce or to protect. Whatever the need is, God is able to do that for us. And so not only was Elijah protected, he was provided for. And all of his needs were met. All he had to do was be obedient to the Lord. We need to be obedient to the Lord, church. God and his ways are past our finding out. But he wants to give us continual revelation of himself. He wants to reveal more and more of himself unto us. And the more we know him, the more we can trust him, the more we will love him, the more we will follow him. But he, he, we, it begins with our obedience. He can't give us all of that when we are rebelling, when we are bucking against the brick, if you will. And so we need to be obedient. You see, as the drought progressed, the water in the brook dried up. But God didn't forget it because he had already prepared another vessel. You see, God knows our needs before they happen. And God had already provided for him another vessel. And so he told Elijah that to get up, and to go to Zarephath because he had provided a little woman there who would meet his needs, who would supply his needs. Well, when you get to that point, of, point of, in the scripture and you read about this widow at Zarephath, she was worse off than Elijah. She was going to, to get a couple of sticks to prepare her final meal for she and her son. And then they were going to die. That was as far as her faith went. They were going to eat and die. But you see, when God sent Elijah there, not only was his need going to be met, her need was going to be met too. You see how God works. Oh yeah. He, he doesn't just work on one side of the house 
You know, he'll come over here and he'll work on the other side of the house. No, he works on this side to help this side. He works on this side to help that side. That's why he calls us together as his body. So that we can support and we can sustain one another, help sustain one another. And so we, as he gets here to this widow that is in Zarephath, God had commanded her. She didn't know anything about it. He said, I have commanded. Because when Elijah asked her for a little water, she went to go get him a little water. While she was going, he says, and bring me a little cake, you know, of bread. And she said, as the Lord liveth, I have but a little handful of meal in the barrel and a little oil in the cruise. And I'm gathering these sticks so that I can cook it and die. And Elijah says, Bring me a cake first. That's denying yourself. This is all I have. It's just my last <coughs> meal. It is not a big meal. It's just that we can have a morsel of bread before we die. Elijah says, bake me a cake first. So that means we have to learn to deny ourselves, church. Somebody else is in need. We're in need. But when you have to meet someone else's need, God will have to meet your need. And so she was obedient. She went and she baked the cake and she brought Elijah his first. Elijah told her, he gave her hope. He told her to fear not. He says, because the oil in the cruise will not wane, it won't end, and the meal in the barrel will not even fail until the Lord sent rain upon the earth. Well, that's where faith is engaged. She had to believe that. She had to trust that this word from this man she just met him for the first time is the word of the Lord. But you go back from the book and it tells Elijah, I have commanded a widow there. There's some of us that sit right here, there's some things that God has commanded us to do. We may not even know about them in the knowledgeable way that I know that God called me to do this. But when the opportunity presents itself, when the time comes for God, that God wants you to do that thing, you will be willing because you have already been commanded to obey the word of the Lord. Because he has a purpose for causing you to do that. And so these two get together. Two needy folk. I need some food. You got a little bit, but if you give me your little bit, I'll give you what I got. And I have the word of the Lord that says, you're going to have more than enough. It's going to be enough to last us until the rain comes. And we'll be able to, you know, enjoy and, and, and rest and not worry about whether the meal is going to end or whether the oil is going to run out. We'll have more than enough until God sends the supply. And so as they do this, I can imagine that they kind of got a little comfortable with that, you know, because they were, God was sustaining the both of them. And sometimes when we look at what God does, we, we look at the supplier, you know, where the supply is coming from, and, and we know that the cargo ships have been, they, they kind of got that, the, you know, the, what do you call it when they get jammed up, the blockage out of the port, you know, you've been getting some of the supplies. but. You know, we need to not look at the suppliers. We need to look at the source. Amen. Amen. Where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord. Amen. It, not come, it doesn't come from the raven who bring it. He was just the supplier. It didn't come from the widow who had the little meal and the little oil. Our source comes from God. Amen. It just says it came then. That's how it comes Amen. today. And we can save ourselves a lot of heartache, a lot of headache, a lot of uh, ulcers and palpitations of the heart and whatever else comes along with all of that, if we would just look to the source, trust the source. The source is God. He, he, he created everything that is here. He owns everything that is here. And he can take what is so far away and get it to you because he knows you have need of it. That's the God that we serve. He's the God that is able to supply in the midst of drought. And he can change times and seasons. He can change the nature of creatures. He can change everything that needs to be changed to get to us what we need. And so never underestimate the suppliers that God uses, what 
Don't focus on the suppliers. Make sure you keep your mind on who's the source. Who's giving the suppliers what they need to bring to you? I was li looking at a, a movie, maybe it was last Sunday, last Monday, last week. I looked at this movie. It's called a Ruby, Finding a Ruby, Rescuing a Ruby. It's about a dog. Rescuing a Ruby. Ruby was one of these rambunctious dogs that nobody could contain, control. Mm -hmm. It was wild. I mean, you open the door and it'll run over you, running through you, <laughs> tore up everything, chewed up everything. I mean, it was a menace. And everyone that took the club, accepted this dog, eventually brought it back to the pound because nobody could handle this dog. Well, God always has a reason for doing what he does. I use that story to point out that even though something other people haven't been able to handle, and at first you may not be able to handle but when you continue to press and trust God, God will make a way. Because the last day of this dog's life, they were going to put him down that night. A man came in who needed a dog. He needed a dog to be, because he wanted to join the canine unit. But this dog was not canine unit qualified. I mean, they, they got their dogs from, I forget the name of the place. I want to call it a Russia, but it's not there. Someplace else, and they cost ten thousand dollars a piece, and he was broke. He didn't have any money, and he could not afford that. But the canine unit couldn't afford any more dogs. But if he was going to get into the canine unit, he needed a dog. So he went and he accepted this dog hours before it was to be put down, and he went through it. But you see, he needed what the dog had, and the dog needed what he had because he had a problem with trusting, with believing in himself, and the dog needed somebody to trust him and to believe in him. Well, the two, long story short, got together, and the dog eventually got trained after many, many mishaps and flunking out of dog training school and everything else. They couldn't even handle him in the dog training school. The guy took all the work, took all his vacation time, and he home taught him and trained him, and he passed the test, and they got into the canine unit. And so, after he got into the canine unit, the same woman that took care of the dog in the pound, her son came up missing. And this man and this dog were the ones that found him. They had other canine units out looking for him, nobody had found him. But when they got this dog, Ruby, he and his trainer, they went out and went, the dog took him straight to where the child was, got the child rescued, got it back to the, the parent, the, look, the owner. And it was the same lady that worked in the pound that had kept the dog, kept the man from killing the dog before then, so that he could get to this guy. And so God works all things together. Yes. I mean, what seemed to be unlikely, who would have ever thought that this dog could ever, I mean, he would, couldn't be still. He was all over the place. I mean, he wouldn't listen. But he came to be one of the best canine dogs that they had. Matter of fact, he won an award in 2018 for having done more rescues than all of the others. You see, don't count God out. I don't say don't count the dog out. Don't count God out. God can take what seems to be impossible and he can make it possible. You just need to trust God and go through the process because there will be a process that you will have to go through. But don't give up. The guy wanted to give up many times. But his wife kept encouraging him. And he was glad she did. And I'm sure that woman with her lost child was glad she did as well. So this widow was preparing to cook her last meal for she and her son. And she had so it was so such a small amount. She was only gathering two sticks to cook it with. So that lets you know it wasn't very much that she was cooking. And so she resolved that they were going to eat and die. But poverty and discouragement. <clears throat> can, can cause hopelessness when you don't have enough, when there's lack. It can cause hopelessness. 
But God wants you to know that he is the bountiful supplier. He's the all-breasted one. He's the one that's able to nurture, to sustain. And so he always will come through when you look to him. She gave out of her lack. It tested her faith, true, but it also positioned her to receive God's abundance. So what is God saying to you today? What is he saying to me today? You see, faith is looking away from your lack and your inability to God and to God's inexhaustible supply. It's daring to trust him. Just like Elijah had to trust and obey God's word, the widow had to trust and obey God through the prophet. And so she was in a similar predicament as the lepers were who were outside of the gate of Samaria. You may have remembered that story. There were some lepers that were outside of the gate of Samaria and there was uh, a famine in the land because uh, the, uh, the uh, people had come and laid siege against the, uh, those that were in Samaria. They couldn't get out to get any food, no food to get into them. And so they were in a, a terrible predicament. And so these lepers, well, if they said to themselves, if we sit here, we're going to die. If we leave, we may be able to find some food. Somebody may save us alive, but we know if we sit here, we're going to die. In other words, we need to change some things is what they were saying. Yeah. And so as we, as we look at this story about Elijah and, and this little woman, they had to change some things. Mm -hmm. These lepers, they changed their minds about sitting there. They went to the camp of the enemy. God had caused the sound to come and the enemy had fled, left everything they had behind them. All of the food, all the clothing, there was gold, there was all kinds of stuff that was left behind that they would not have received if they had not gotten up from where they were and did something different. Mm -hmm. And you and I have to get up from where we are and do right. something different. Yeah. And so not only did they get supplied, but they sent word back to those that were inside the, gap, the, the gates of the palace there so that they could be supplied. Mm -hmm. And as they sent, the king didn't want to go outside. He says, oh, it's just a trick to pull us out from outside the wall so they can kill us. Mm -hmm. But the, one of his stewards said, well, just send five horses, you know. Don't send many. And let's go see. And when they went to see, they found more than enough to supply their need. You see, God's ways are not our ways. Man. He knows how to take what we call crazy mm. and make it what we need to meet, to meet our needs. Mm. And so God supplied the, rewarded the lepers, and he made them a blessing to those who had been shut up. And what that says to me today is, is that our faith will be tested. Yes, it will. We say we have faith, but when the test comes, we wonder whether we have faith or not because it's a little wobbly, it's a little shaky. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to hold fast to what his word says. Because one of the things in this story about this dog, the dog, somebody had been murdered and the dog was looking for the body. And when he found the body, he sat right there, which is what they do until you come. But when they looked, they didn't see a body. It was because it was buried under a, a, a patio, under some concrete. And when the man looked under there, he couldn't see a body because it was under the concrete. But the dog's nose sensed the body mm -hmm. and knew that it was there. Mm -hmm. And so we have to trust God whether we see or whether we don't mm -hmm. see. We have to trust what God says. Amen. So don't miss the steps that are given to you from this life of Elijah or this morning because he had to have faith to do what God says do, go to the brook chair. He had to have uh, faith to remain there. He had to obey God. And then he had to deny, uh, the widow had to deny herself when it came time to sharing what she had with the prophet of God. And so when we look here at verse 14, it says, The barrel of meal shall not waste, it won't end. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. So she went and she did, the widow went and did according as Elijah said, and she and her household ate many days. The barrel of oil, the barrel of meal didn't fail, the cruise of oil didn't end because of the word that the Lord spoke through Elijah. 
But faith has to be a continual commodity. Amen. We have to keep on believing. Yes. We can't just believe one time and say, okay, I believe, and then that's that. you got to keep on believing. Why? Because there will always be something else to trust God for. Amen. That's right. You see, this is the, that's the life that we live. We have to continually trust God. And so after these things, the widow's son got sick. And he, the sickness was so bad that there was no breath left in the son's body. In other words, he died. There was no breath in his body. And the mother came to Elijah and says, what have you done? Have you come to call my sins to remembrance? And so Elijah, God had not shown Elijah this, because you see, it wasn't just about the widow's faith. It was about Elijah's faith, too. Sometimes you think that the, the men and women of God, you know, because they're doing God's work, they're all, they all got so much faith and everything else. But you know, we have to continue to trust God like you have to continue to trust God. And like God tests your faith, He will test our faith to see if we truly believe as well. And so when the woman brought the son uh, to Elijah, he took him to, to, his, to the wall where he slept, laid the child on the bed, and he paced the floor and he prayed over him and cried out to God, have you come to bring, you know, this wickedness upon this woman that you have sent me to? And he continued to pray. He stretched himself out all over the child three times and prayed again and asked God to let the, the soul of this child come back into his body. And God heard his prayer. And God answered him. And the child revived. Amen. Now, go back to the part about the soul. And then go back with you to Genesis. Because when God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, they became a living soul. So when you have no breath in your body, your soul is gone. It's no longer there. But when he asked God to let the soul of this child come back, life returned to the body of this child. And you need to know that there is nothing too hard for God because God not only heard and answered Elijah's prayer, but he caused him to be strengthened in his own faith. And the woman surely was strengthened in her faith because she said, by this I know that you are a man of God and that you have the word of God in your mouth. Not everyone who calls himself the man or the woman of God have the word of God in their mouth. In other words, some of them just say a few things that sound good, and then they put their spin on it, and, and they don't have the word of the Lord. And many people are being led astray today mm -hmm. because that not everyone that claims to know the Lord are truly speaking what the word of the Lord says. Mm -hmm. And so we must be careful that we read our word ourselves so that we know when we hear it. When it comes back to us, we know that, yes, I've read that. Yes, that's true. I knew an old lady in a church many years ago. She says, it's in the book. Yeah. It's in the book. And when the preacher said something that wasn't in the book, she said, not in the book. <laughs> she said, right in the middle of service. She said, not in the book. <laughs> so read your words so you know whether it's in the book yourself. Amen. Amen. And so Elijah returned her son to her alive. And we know that we need to keep doing the same things that Elijah and this woman did. We need to keep believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep believing God's word is true. Yeah. We serve a God who has proven himself over and over again. And he said when we call, he would answer and show us great and mighty things that we know not of. And in these last days, these troubling times that we are in, we serve the same God. He hasn't changed. Yeah. He's the same one who clothed the lilies in the fields. He's the same one who supplied Elijah and this widow that we're speaking of this morning. He's the one that called the sun to stand still for Joshua. He's the one who multiplied the loaves and the fish. He hasn't changed. He's the same God, and he's still concerned about you. So let's follow the steps of Elijah. He heard the word of God. He believed the word of God. He spoke the word of God, and that's what we have to do. We have to hear it, we have to believe it, and we have to speak it. Not only do we speak it for other people to hear, but so we can hear ourselves speaking it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we're speaking God's word out of our mouth, we are hearing the word of God, and faith is being increased. Faith is being renewed. And so we need to be speaking the word of God. 
And then he followed the instructions of God, which positioned him at the place he needed to be where the provisions were being poured out, uh, dropped in, dropped off by the ravens, however you want to phrase that. He continued to obey by going to Zarephath, and not only was he provided for, the widow was provided for, both of them were tested, but they got their provision, they got their needs met. And so what I'm saying to us today, you may face shortages, whether it's for food or whether it's for fuel or whether, whatever it is. There may be shortages in your life today, but look to the source. The source is? I've told you two or three times, four or five times. I have only father. I have only father. It's not the supplier. That's right. That's right. He's the source. He's not coming down here, standing in, passing out food baskets. You will not see him standing on any corner, passing out food baskets. But he has some people. Those are the suppliers. But he's the source. Mm -hmm. Our source is God. Everything we need comes from him. Amen. And so look to the source because he'll make a way where there seems to be no way. And don't forget to obey and to trust him and his word. Because Trust and obey, but there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. You remember that song? Yeah. That's a song. It's a good song. And so, share what you have when it looks like you're going to get left out. Somebody say, well, you know, I only have enough for, you know, for me and mine, and so I don't have enough to give you. But if I give you some of what I have, and I take less of what I have for me, not only will you get blessed, but God will supply See, if your hand is always closed, God can't put nothing in it. But when you open it up to let what you have out, then God can put more in your hand. Yes. And so let's be open-handed and open-hearted and be a blessing to others and not just always takers. Like the Dead Sea, you know why they call it the Dead Sea? Because there's no life in there at all. Right. I mean, everything comes in, nothing goes out. It's all dead. And it stinks to high heaven. Yeah. I've been there, no. So there are no shortages in God. He owns the cattle on the thousand hills, and he still changes nature, he changes time, all for his glory. So receive his blessing today because he is your supply in the midst of drought. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. You see the word today? Yes. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. He will supply in the midst of drought. Yes. <laughs>